We have with us Arizona head coach Tommy Lloyd. Tommy began his coaching career at all places like Walla Walla Community College, but uh, spent 20 years at Gonzaga with Mark Few. Two years now at Arizona, the Wildcats are 61 and 10. So he's put together, uh, Coach, you've put together quite a, uh, quite a program so far. Thank you. What, um, uh, at what point in the season did you feel that your team was really starting to gel? Well, you know, I, I had high expectations for this group, you know, and, and you know, we did, we, we lost, you know, some really good players. I think we had three guys drafted in the top 33 um, you know, who, who were all very deserving. And, you know, so I think, you know, from the outside looking in, I think everybody expected maybe for us to take a step back. But um, I didn't think we would. I, I thought we had the pieces in place to, to play consistently at a high level. And, and, um, and, and, I, and I felt like, you know, we had a group that was built to win basketball games. You know, maybe if you, you know, try to prognosticate it out, like like the experts do, you know, maybe it was a little hard to, to see the forest through the trees, but I thought if we just kind of really drilled it down and took it day by day, I thought we had a good group. And, and so I felt like we gelled really early, you know, to get back to, to, to your question, and I felt like we were built to have a great season. And um, fortunately, you know, the guys have followed through on that, and, and now, you know, it, it's time to put the icing on the cake, so to speak. Sir? Tommy, Chris Savarez, Channel 40 here in Sacramento. I want to ask you about your relationship with Domas Sabonis because I know you worked with him, recruited him when you were at Gonzaga. What's your relationship like with him, and, and what are you seeing from him now and what he's able to do with this organization here? Well, the, the relationship is family. I mean, um, you know, we're incredibly close with him and his family. And, you know, Domas is, you know, like a little brother. Um, and, and, you know, and, and we have – great relationships with his parents and his siblings and you know and anytime we get together it's a lot of fun uh you know recently you know me and a couple of guys on our staff that that played with Domus or were there when he was with us when we went to Salt Lake City to go to the all-star break with him and his family and and, ha and had a great great night uh, it was really cool and, and we're just so proud of him um to see how far he's come and and you know when when they made the move to get out of Indi Indiana you know, you looked at it and you were like, you know, I think selfishly, you know, me and my family wanted him in Phoenix. And I, and I, and I think that, I mean, I, listen, I'm not in all those conversations, but that was potentially an option. And uh, when, when it came to going to Sacramento, you know, I, I think everyone took a step back and you just trusted Domus would make the best of it. And obviously it's been an incredible fit. And, you know, I, I know Coach Brown a little bit as well. And to just... You know, the way he's utilized Domus and the way he's played, I think, is special. And it's so much fun to turn on the TV and watch him play the way he does every day because he brings it. And, uh, and so I think he's a great fit for this community. And I think uh, he's lucky to have Sacramento, and I think Sacra Sacramento's lucky to have him. Sir? Yeah, Tommy, Steve Rivera, AllSportsTucson.com. Um, Coach Henderson from Princeton said uh, one of the successes that the team loves playing together. You can see it uh, on the court. You have the same team. Can you talk about how, uh, in, how much enjoyment they get to get, to get you know, playing together? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's simple. I think basketball is best when it's a shared experience. I think it's best when, um, when teammates are enjoying each other's successes and, and they're not fighting each other for individual success. And, and you know, that's something, you know, you know that, that I think organically happens in our culture. And, and um, you know, our guys love playing for each other. I think they love playing for big moments uh, as a group. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's fun. It, it, it's what makes the job enjoyable. And, and you can see that, obviously, you know, you know Coach Henderson in, in, in Princeton, you know, you, it, it's synonymous with team basketball. I mean, you literally, you know, and somebody told me, asked me the other day is, is Princeton running the Princeton offense? And I'm like, yeah, they run the Princeton offense every year, no matter what they're running, because it's the Princeton offense. You know, it's not, and, and, and uh, you could see, you know, uh, them play. And I, and I even know Coach Carrill, you know, had a special relationship with the Sacramento organization. So it's kind of cool to see how everything kind of comes full circle for both programs to, to be here in Sacramento. Scott? Hey, Tommy, Scott Miller, New York Times. Um, where Princeton, that Princeton offense, what makes that, or how unique of a challenge is it? Well, to face that? I mean, I would say this: like 
when you say the term the Princeton offense, okay, I mean, I'm sure they have layers of it in what they do, but it's not what they're doing. Okay, they're, they're running a, a, an offense that everybody is running today, a lot of five out, you know, two-man, three-man actions, you know. I mean, I'm sure they get, you know, the Princeton offense is synonymous with, with back cutting and movement and stuff like that. And, yeah, they, they back cut here and there, but it, it's not the Princeton offense I grew up with. But, but you know, I, but hey, all, all systems evolve, and, and their systems evolve. But, it, but the one thing is it's rooted in fundamentals, it's rooted in unselfishness, and it's rooted in being able to pass. And, you know, also all those elements, you know, that, that it takes, that are required to run the traditional Princeton system are, you, you could see them in what they're doing today. And following up on that, uh, uh, Tosan Owama, the number 20 for them, how unique of a player is he? And what, what, what have you seen in him in film? Well, he's a really unique player, just with his size, ability to handle the basketball and facilitate. And, you know, and obviously he's a willing passer. He leads their team in assist. Uh, you know, it makes it for a tough matchup. You know, we, we've played a few guys, you know, maybe not exactly like him, but dissimilar with size and, and comfortable, how comfortable they are with the ball. And Drew Peterson from SC and, and Jaime Hawkins from USC and our UCLA. And those, those guys are hard to play against. I mean, they, they really put a lot of stress on your defense and force you to make decisions. So, uh, you know, he's, he's been, it's been fun to watch him play on film. He's definitely got our full attention. And, you know, we're going to come out and hopefully do, do the best job we can neutralizing his impact on the game. Last question for me. Um, Pete Carrill, I know you're east. I mean, you're west. He was east. In coaching circles, did, did you meet him? Did you encounter him? Did you run into him? Were you influenced him by I, him? I never did. I, I never, I never, I was never able to meet him. I know, um, I think the closest I came to the Princeton program, um, you know, Coach Sky Etten and their assistant coach uh, has, a, has some West Coast ties, and, and my son was playing at an AAU tournament back east, and we took an unofficial visit to Princeton. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. Liam, Liam plays at Northern Arizona now. I mean, I don't know if Princeton would have been an option for him or not, but but it was just cool to walk around the campus, see the facilities and stuff like that. So I, I got one trip back there, and you know, and, and Princeton has an amazing basketball tradition, and, it, and it's an honor to be playing them in the tournament. Gentleman over here. Hey, Tommy. Pat Paris from Keg on TV in Tucson. Um, I asked Azulis earlier about his confidence level this time around with with March Madness, and he said their his confidence level was high. How do you see Azulis coming into this tournament this year versus uh, a little bit of a struggle for him last year? Well, you know, he, you know, he obviously didn't he didn't play great in the tournament last year, but you know, I, I think that happens sometimes. You know, I mean, I think players, you know, can ebb and flow, and unfortunately, his ebb kind of came at a, you know, unfortunate time for him and for our team. I think he's flowing now. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't have it in front of me. I, I may need my SIDs to confirm, but I think he was the Pac-12 tournament MVP, right? I mean, so, you know, if you, if you win the Pac-12 tournament, you know, play three tough games, three consecutive days, and you're the MVP, I think you're playing pretty good. So uh, I, I like where he's at, and, uh, and he's had an amazing season, and, and I think he's got a focus um, to, to keep that going and, and make the most of this moment. Question over here. Hey, Coach Jordan Ham, Sports 360AZ. When you're able to take a look, uh, take a step back and look at what Kylan has been able to do reclassifying, you weren't sure when he was going to be able to take the court for you. How quickly he was able to ramp up and, and be a contributor on the court for you? Well, he, you know, Kylan's had a, a, a tremendous freshman year that I think is building the foundation for what's going to be a special career. Um, you know, he obviously, you know, the plan was for him not to come to Arizona. You know, he was going to be in high school and you know, do all those things kids like him do, be a McDonald's All-American, play in the Hoop Summit game, probably play in the Geico tournament. But, you know, unfortunately, he broke his foot over the summer, and his family, you know, inquired about maybe coming early, and, you know, so he could come here and rehab and just, you know, get, get, get some maybe the medical treatment that they were hoping for. So he did that. And when he did that, I told him, that's great. I don't know how much you're going to play. Because I wanted to be honest with him, and I wanted to kind of tamper down expectations, and, and I knew it was going to be more of a struggle than he realized. And and you know, early in the year he struggled a little bit, and I just told him, I'm not really going to coach you. Uh, you know, early in the year, you know, uh, try to be healthy by December 1st, okay? And then so he got healthy around December 1st. We'll see how it goes. I said, you know, and then January 1st, I'm going to start coaching you. And then February 1st, 
I'm going to start, I'm going to quit saying, well, he's doing great for a 17 year old. I'm going to start coaching you like an all conference player that you need to be. So I've been on, I've been on Kylan pretty hard and you know, that's it, a, it's a lot to take and maybe an adjustment for a 17 year old kid, but he's handled it with class. And I think he's getting better week by week, game by game right now. Gentlemen up front. Yeah, Tommy, Steve Rivera again with AllSportsTucson.com. Um, what are your expectations from Barlow? He played very well with the hand on Saturday. Anything change with him? Um, just expectations? Well, you know, I'm, I'm expecting him to come out and impact the game, you know, like, like he always does. And, uh, you know, play with great energy and effort. And, you know, and then, and then, you know, statistically, I mean, I don't really, you know, I don't put much of a burden on his shoulders because I think if he's playing well, impacting the game, the stats just come. So, yeah, I mean, we're looking for, for uh, Umar to have his usual impact, you know, th th that he's been having on all these games. And you've been here two years now, very successful with the numbers, uh, a lot of wins, a few losses. Uh, how have you settled in, if that's the right term, uh, coming into the second year of this? And uh, it, I, it, I'm sure it's hard to talk about your success, but if you could a little and, and how well you've done to this point. Well, you know, I, I think the success is a byproduct. I mean, obviously, of having good players, but I think of really just taking a day-to-day -day approach. I know that's old and boring, but that's what I do. Um, I think this time around in the tournament, um, you know, I, I feel you know much more comfortable. And you know, not that I haven't you know participated with Gonzaga as an assistant coach in a lot of NCAA tournaments, so you had a familiarity. But this time as a head coach, I feel a lot more comfortable. I think our team's comfortable, um, and you know, I, I think we're you know we're obviously excited to be here but 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 I know we're not satisfied and and so I think that that's that that's a good formula you know I mean I'm, I'm I like our mindset but listen there's no guarantee that mindset's going to just roll into victories I mean you got to go out and you got to play the game I mean I keep telling our guys I mean we can call it the NCAA tournament you can call it the March Madness but at the end of the day it's basketball this is all about basketball so we need to stay locked in and play good basketball I mean that's been my message to them Any further questions? Did somebody didn't, didn't give Bruce the time for the press conference? He might have gotten lost. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.